The History of Islam Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the founder and prophet of Islam, was born in 570 AD in the town of Mecca in what is Saudi Arabia today. Islam, now the world's second largest religion, did not develop in a vacuum, but arose from many factors of the time, most of all because of the unique genius of Muhammad. Historical Background Mecca was a growing crossroads center on the caravan route going north from Yemen to Syria. Powerful kingdoms had existed in the Yemen from as far back as 1200 BC. In the time of King Solomon, the Queen of Sheba ruled over such an empire in the Yemen. The Yemenis were very important in the economy of the ancient world. They had control over the production of the highly valued spices of frankincense and myrrh and had figured out how to use the monsoon winds to travel between Arabia and India from where they brought back spices and condiments. From nearby Ethiopia, they also imported ivory and other items. These and other precious goods were then taken by camel caravan up the coast of Arabia to be traded in Egypt in the lands of Mesopotamia, from where they were shipped around the Mediterranean. In 226 A.D., the Persian kingdom of the Sasanians, with its state religion of Zoroastrianism, was founded. The ancient rivalry between Persia and Greece, remember Alexander the Great, was soon to continue with the heirs of the Greeks, the Roman Empire. Around 300 A.D., this Persian Empire was at war with Rome. Shortly afterwards, the Roman Emperor Constantine professed Christianity, and he eventually made Christianity the official religion of the Eastern Roman Empire, which later became known as the Byzantine Empire. So the struggle between Rome and Persia became religious as well as political, especially as Rome began to officially support the Christian proselytizing of lands under Roman control or adjoining Roman colonies. Missionaries were sent out to the outlying areas of Egypt and Ethiopia. From there, missionary activity went into the areas of the Yemen, and both Jewish and Christian footholds and centers were established before the arrival of Islam. The Jewish presence in Arabia largely came after the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD. The Roman general Titus had conquered Jerusalem, sacked the city, destroyed the temple, and expelled the remaining Jews from the land. A number of these Jews moved down to Arabia and resettled there, and even became influential. In 523 AD, a king of the Yemen converted to Judaism and later massacred a number of Christians living in a Christian center in the Yemen. The survivors of this massacre appealed to the Roman Byzantine emperor for vengeance, and he arranged for the Christian Abyssinians, or Ethiopians, to invade, bringing the Yemen under the control and influence of Christians. Fifty years later, around the time of Muhammad's birth, the Zoroastrian Persians invaded and conquered the Yemen, controlling it until it finally became Muslim at the end of Muhammad's life. This back-and-forth conquering and reconquering occurred in the north of Arabia too, where the two great empires and their Arabic client states fought against each other. Much like in the Cold War period of the last century, when the Soviet Union and America fought each other by proxy through client states like North and South Korea and North and South Vietnam, the two superpowers of that time also used various client states in the Middle East and Arabia. In the century preceding Islam, these two great powers were occupied with each other, often at war, wearing each other down, so that in Central Arabia a power vacuum existed that permitted the rise of Islam to power. Mecca at the time of Muhammad was far enough away to be outside of the center of conflict between the two powers, and so it had the ability to grow in power and influence yet it was still close enough to be affected by the ferment of challenging religious ideas as a result of the thrusts by the superpowers into the region. The Arab Quraysh tribe, which began to control Mecca around 400 to 500 AD, had established Mecca as an important commercial and religious center. Caravans traveling along the north-south route brought trade and wealth to the city, and prosperity was growing. Along with the caravan trade, the pre-Muslim Arabs of Mecca also had a religious sanctuary called the Kaaba, which brought Arabs from all over Central Arabia on pilgrimage. B. 
before Muhammad's time, the Quraysh had made covenant agreements with the Bedouins and other Arabs that a three-month period would be set aside each year for pilgrimage to the Kaaba, and no interfighting or raiding would be allowed then. Caravan raiding had always been a very popular and time-honored way for an Arab to gain wealth, and blood feuds were an ancient tradition, so it was important for stability and growth that Mecca promoted this peaceful period for the pilgrimage. Arabs came from all over to Mecca during the holy months to perform the religious rituals of the pilgrimage and to trade, and popular fairs were conducted where poetry contests were held. It was a time of cultural fermentation and renaissance. Religious Influences The religion of the Arabs was largely one of idolatry. Many different gods were worshipped, with towns and places often being host to one or more idols. The Kaaba in Mecca is said to have contained over 300 idols, with one of the main gods being Allah. Records state that a red stone statue of a man named Hubal, who was perhaps one of the Baal idols mentioned in the Bible, had been brought down from Syria and put in the Kaaba prior to Muhammad's time, and this idol may have been seen as the representation of Allah. In any case, Allah was considered by some Arabs to be the chief god. He had three daughters who were also goddesses, and like the saints of the Catholic Church, they were seen to have the power of intercession with Allah. While polytheistic, the religion of the Arabs was also very much this worldly, with the gods being used by the worshippers to manipulate situations and bring about the desired results. The Arabs also believed in different kinds of spirits, such as the jinn, from where we get our word genie, spirit beings, it was believed, who could dwell in various objects and places and who often needed to be appeased. As we mentioned before, there were some Jews living in Arabia, as well as some Judaized Arab tribes who were monotheistic, and they had an influence on religious thinking in certain places, such as Medina. The Jewish Talmud and Mishnah, the rabbinical commentaries and stories explaining Jewish law, circulated among them. There don't seem to have been very many Jews in Mecca at the time of Muhammad. While there were Christians in Arabia, the state of Christianity that existed was a very deficient one. The Bible had not yet been translated into Arabic, and so Christians in Arabia put their faith more in the apocryphal stories of religious fantasy that were often circulating. Most Christian towns or centers had their own patron saints, and the Christians tended to worship Mary and the different saints. In central Arabia, where Mecca was, there were only some scattered Christians living.